conferencing is a game-based simulation focused on world conflict that was constructed over the years at the Bishop School to empower students to understand their world, the world that they will inherit, uh, in a new way. It came as a result of the lessons learned from 9-11, um, which were very heartfelt in the, as a classroom teacher on how to really discuss that with my students and how to sort out all the different uh, information surrounding the event. You've got a lot to do. You're both at similar phase here. You've got your brainstorming to chart going. You're adding to it. What you're trying to move toward now is the information that you can build into a real piece document. And that will be the next phase on the open simulation platform that will be up over the weekend. What creates the difficulties and the lack of communication in the world between people and cultures and how can you give students the tools to work with others in a global world and so I thought of uh, the idea of a simulated peace conference what issues are most where students so could select a conflict of their choosing um, that they would like to try to resolve and they would uh, become the positions through a group process, through organizing the learning environment themselves, and then that they would bring that position to the table based on real research from uh, United States press, but also from the press that represented the position that they were holding at the table so that the ideas flowing out of the negotiation were more than a United States perspective and that the students then would become empowered by the information. Keep it on Jerusalem as much as you can. We need to have that area, Jerusalem, it needs to be right at the border of the Palestine and Israel, as it um, pretty much is right now, and it needs to be its own um, principality. I don't think either side can have control of Jerusalem. Mr. Netanyahu, Israel. On the issue of the settlements. On the issue of settlements, on borders, on dividing. The two-state solution could work, uh, possibly if certain needs of Israel are met. So let's really quickly go over the issues related with the recognition of the nationality. Okay. Well, Palestine, I think, needs to be recognized as a state. That's one of their main issues. Yeah. Along with Israel. And I don't want to speak for them, but I think that's... Yeah. And we have to respect Israel's recognition. Right. So, how about we... Okay. Otherwise, we don't, we don't need a whole new board. So, and that's all the needs we have, right? Do you think there are any others? I think we're on the verge of reaching a solution. I was at the United States Institute of Peace, and I was there for a negotiator workshop. I had discussed what my students had been doing in the classroom, building this peace conferencing project, and that how the time had come where they needed to go electronic. They needed to move it on to a desktop organizer, or something that would help them with all of the world press and all the information that they were using. What we do is we go into the meeting section, which is basically a, uh, a chat box, and we all, we, like this is what we did um, uh, for the last couple nights. We were, going, we were brainstorming each individual position's needs and possible solutions to those needs. And uh, what we ended up getting out of that was the second brainstorm, which is needs everyone can agree on, which, I mean, of course, is a big part of getting peace, is what everyone wants and compromise and solutions to those problems. Before digital media, it would be, you know, a library project. It would be team building um, to some degree. And even uh, different conflict resolution uh, lessons that people have prepared for students have been all adult generated. So they would have the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, but it would be how a bunch of educators went to 
the territory itself and how they homed in on the different positions uh, and how they would gather the material and create the material for the students who then would carry out the meeting. Instead, this is all in the hands of the students who use this open simulation platform throughout weeks of preparation, going from the pre-negotiation stage where they're trying to brainstorm to see what conflict they would like to represent. They then have to use the open simulation platform with needs and fears of different positions that they might want to bring to the table. They have the ability to vote on the platform to see which positions they would want to have and which positions they would kind of vote off the island. Uh, and so that they hopefully bring the major players, but also players that they feel are of interest to moving ahead in this particular conflict that they've chosen. So in the final process, the idea would be student empowerment, but also the idea of hooking up with global youth who would like to become partners in this effort. Okay guys, so as everyone can see, Brian has pulled up the meeting from last night. So, yeah, remember to refer back to that, and that's what we're going to be doing today, referring back to those um, questions that we asked um, Taboo last night while we were on the OSP and talking to um, him from Northern Uganda. So, today we kind of have to work quickly because we have to solve some of those final issues. So I want to finalize the issue with Joseph Coney about what we're doing with him. And I also want to finish Museveni and the funding issue. Is everyone good with that? Yeah. yeah. So last night we had a really successful meeting on the OSP, the Open Simulation Platform, where we actually met with someone in northern Uganda who had experienced the conflict himself and gave us some really helpful input on you know what's actually going on there right now and how and his input will help us solve some of the issues that we've been debating at the table recently. If you were only give them a chance to articulate at the table that through dialogue, through communication, through listening, then through problem solving, that at the other end of the process would be something solid like a document that would attest to everyone working diligently to create this new hope, this idea of some kind of resolution. You know, been introduced to this new uh, world of peace conferencing, and I think it's a, a definitely great thing. And I'll, I'll never view, you know, peace building and stuff like that in the same way again because of this. I think it's just made me view the world in a completely different way because. Every single time I see a conflict come up, for example, Palestinian and Israel, we know there's a conflict. And it, just understanding what the problem is will help us in real life. Trying to fix it just really feels, I feel it in the heart that people are trying to help the world. It teaches us to really look at other people's sides and see how their take on the situation and not just our position and what we want, but what's, what is the more humane thing to do. We don't think it's the goal is to win, we think the goal is to bring it to a peaceful conclusion. And that's an important part. It's not a game in the sense that there's a winner and a loser, and that's just the overall goal of peace conferencing. But there's just people coming together and seeing what they can get from each other, and seeing how they can work together to solve their problems and create peace. Like saying, I agree that we will make these reforms because the LRA is going to be solved. Okay, so let's.